Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, the quarantine edition episodes. Joining me today for this pandemic podcast, we have Emily, also known as La Petite Bière. Hello. Hi, thank Hi. you for joining us today. Uh, so I see you've got yourself a beer poured. I've got myself a beer poured as well. Uh, what beer are you having while you join us today? I'm drinking a New England IPA. It's called Ma La Norge Saint Marcel. Un, one. Okay. <laughs> so it's from uh, Microbrasserie La Veille. Awesome. Uh, I have from not very, far very from good, my. Super free. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I have not far from my house, thankfully, from Masorum Bractorium. Oh. Uh, the double pandemonium. So I also went <laughs> New England IPA. I see we're both fans of the style at the moment, so that's great. Perfect. So as we do virtually, a toast. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work quite as well. Okay. Wow. Come on, then. Mm, that's a tasty beer. So what's, uh, what's your beer story? What got you into beer Instagram? It's actually two things. Uh, first one would be my boyfriend, Carl, because before I met him, I was only drinking white beer, like with me or Effe Weizen sometimes. <laughs> um, it, that would be the first thing. So it piqued my interest into craft beer. And also because, as you know, I also am a French-Canadian actress. <laughs> and sometimes um, you have period where you work like crazy and some other period where you just go like this for three months. <laughs> so during those periods, I was getting very, you know, anxious and you know, I, acting, you don't have the control of, over what you do. You just wait for the phone to, to ring. And even if you're good and you're super proactive, you know, you still need to have to be a big name in order to be able to work. You know, I can pay my rent, but it's not enough. Yeah. So I was one of these uh, whole holes let's, let's call it mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I was going crazy and I said you know what I'm just gonna start a beer Instagram you know just to pass time and to have control over something and if I want to bring it there I'm gonna work and bring it there and if I just want to sit for a week and relax and just you know watch other bloggers or whatever I'm gonna do it I have a hundred percent control and this is why I decided to start my blog and I best decision ever <laughs> yeah that's fantastic uh, you know it's just finding the passion behind uh, getting it going just just like this show it was uh just some guys getting together once a month doing a beer tasting to uh getting to know the brewers getting to know people like yourself and, and guys uh and gentlemen and ladies in ontario as well uh to kind of bring all a craft beer together on my show and as well getting to interview um a, a woman like yourself and, and other women uh, involving diversity on my show, which I like to do. <laughs> well, I'm I re I'm really glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so where so you discovered craft beer through your boyfriend? Uh, what was the first kind of real craft beer that you had? I couldn't. I cannot say like the brewery or the name of the beer, but uh, he introduced me to IPAs, actually, and I. Yeah, the only thing I knew was blonde ale and white ale, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so I couldn't specifically name one, but yeah, it was uh, the IPA style. Yeah, and IPA is so diverse. Uh, you know, it's such a wide range. You could play with it too. Yes. Uh, the New England style is still fairly new when you think about it. Uh, Brute, it, it wasn't around long, but it was another IPA. Just there's so we much that brewers can do with the base IPA recipe. It's fantastic. Totally. I agree. <laughs> uh, where did you come up with La Petite Bière? Hmm. It's a great question, actually. It is a French expression. It, you say, c'est de la petite bière. So it means like, oh, it's easy peasy. You know, it's small potatoes. It's, you know, it's all cool, bro. You know, <laughs> it's that kind of vibe of expression in French. So I thought, yeah, why not? You know, it's super French and... Yeah, it had a background, so that's why. <laughs> well, for the English viewers, the straight translation is the small beer, or we oui. pretty much <laughs> so. The <small> beer. <laughs> awesome. Or the tiny beer. <laughs> yeah, uh, your photographer. I'm 
it's it's not you, right? It's somebody else you're no, it's photographer. Carl, yeah. It's my okay. good friend Carl, yeah. Awesome. He uh yeah. you two it, you could see it like really works really well together. Obviously, he knows your best angles and what kind of light you should be in and stuff. So uh your pictures are fantastic looking for for Instagram. It's very it pops very forward. Uh, the beer you have too, it's very, very front and Thank you. It, trying to make the beer like the part of it without just yes. kind of you being in the background. So it's very, very getting the beer forward, which is very nice, I'm sure, for the brewers to see. That's super, super sweet. sweet. I really appreciate it. I, it's because, you know, I come from a publicity acting background. So we're, and Carl is a photographer, like it's his real job. He's, he's not just a, an Instagram boyfriend, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So uh, we really, and he likes, you know, to try new technique, new lighting, new colors, new backdrop, new, new, new uh, locations. And for me, I like, you know, to transform myself, you know, put like shiny things and then be all in black. And then, you know, I really like to be a bird, you know, be a lizard, you know, <laughs> be the Grinch, like everything, like everything's possible. And like with, with our two backgrounds together, it makes like a super nice uh, melting pot. So yeah, we really like to, you know, and showcase beer because, you know, sometimes you need a, 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 a not a purpose, but like a reason to do a, you know, to kick yourself in the ass and try this concept you dreamed about, you know. So beer is a great uh, <laughs> great way to do that. <laughs> it's a great motivator, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> so you mentioned kind of like your flight and bird, and I see you have a GoFundMe going at the moment to uh, save uh, parakeets, Shelter. parrots. Yes, there you go. It's called Perroquet en Folie. So this is a very cool story, actually. Um uh, Trou du Diable contacted me to create content for them. So I was like, oh, it's the first time, you know, that they, they contact me. So I want to impress them. So I'm going to contact this shelter. It was a girl that I knew through a friend. So I called her and she was like, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. And since we know a little bit each other, we start, you know, talking and everything. And she told me like everything is breaking in her shelter. And since she is super young, so when she bought it, she didn't know, you know, how, you know, uh, construction works and the shelter is made like from, it's, it's crap. It's like, she have a Jeep rug for interior wall, okay. mm -hmm. but it's what, it, that is what makes her, her, uh, her roof for the birds. But she didn't know because she bought it from a mean old man. <laughs> Anyways. So yes, yeah, she was in deep trouble and uh, she had like a huge uh, accident with water and, you know, yeah, the parrot, the parrots are still there and they still need to be fed. And with COVID, it was like crazy because usually she opens the shelter to visitors. You know, she doesn't sell parrots. It's really a shelter shelter. So she couldn't do anything of the, like that. And she travels to schools and CHSLD. Once again, she couldn't do that. So she was uh, in deep um Keep trouble. S a week. <laughs> I was like, how can I say that? <laughs> it's fine. I, I understand it's hard to, to not swear sometimes being an adult, but. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I get it. It's a, it's a great challenge, actually. Yeah. yeah. No, so, it's... yeah, they were in deep trouble. So uh, I was like, oh my God, I cannot, you know, let it let it go like that. Like the, the blend is too perfect. And I knew that Trou du Diable are really, you know, like. Uh, we have a festival in Victoriaville, which is my hometown. It's called Rock La Cause. Mm -hmm. And this festival, all the money that they make, they give it to one foundation. Every year it's different. So Trou du Diable always participate in those kinds of events. And I was like, hmm, no festival this summer. So, you know, they're probably looking for projects like that. So I called the guy and said, you know, this girl, this, this shelter, blah, blah, blah. And he said, Oh my God, this is such a, you know, so touching. We want to do something like the uh, IPA and the par parakeets, like they work so well together. It's like a perfect blend. So we're giving $2,000. Like, tell us if it's okay. <laughs> I was like, it's more than okay. <laughs> so I was super glad, like this turns out that way. Like the best, one of the best collab I ever made yeah. just for and that. It's, it's wonderful that you're using your platform to promote uh, something so selflessly. So. Oh, but if you, if you, I spend a lot of time with the parrots. 
since I knew these guys, like, oh, they're so loving and attaching and, you know, like, I, <laughs> please give, give generously. <laughs> they deserve it. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to add that to my own Instagram. I'm not as, as a huge influencer at this time as you are, obviously, but it always helps to get that out. So, so you're a Cicerone as well, level one, correct? Yes. What made you decide to go for the prestige, the beginning of a prestigious Cicerone career, potential Cicerone career, I should say? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to pursue, yes, uh, for sure. It's very interesting. Um, well, I did that because, you know, I'm a funny little girl slash woman uh, who likes to wear flashy costumes and be, you know, sexy even sometimes. So... <laughs> I have a lot of trolling, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they were like the trolls, like they say a lot of dumb things, but they say one true thing. I didn't have any um, uh, classes, you know, I didn't, I just, I was just a beer amateur. Mm -hmm. So they were right in a way that I didn't have any certification, you know? Yep. So, and at the same time, um, there was this contest that Cicerone Canada organized. They were uh, giving away one um, beer server course and exam, one in each province. And I won for the Quebec province because I explained the same thing that I explained to you. Like, I want to close one extra doors for the, for the tro troll. And if mm -hmm. I do these kinds of uh, workshops, let's say, uh, it's going to help me you know, close this door, at least they won't going to be, they, they will not be able to say, oh, this is wrong. You said that wrong. You know, I'm going to learn and learn and learn and educate myself until I'm, you know, I'm a shell. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. Um, have you met uh, or spoken with Marilla Amato, uh, Canada's master Cicerone? No, I haven't. Okay. You met her? Uh, I met her briefly at one of the Mondiales. Uh, I spoke with her for about 10 minutes. I bought her book, Beerology, uh, but oh, she was she was busy. So, uh, and the show hadn't even started yet. So I didn't even think about like, I was just the guy going to the beer festivals going, let's try this beer, let's try this beer. Wee! And trying beer <laughs> upon beer. And then I'm finally like, you know what? I'm gonna start sticking with better beer and trying. I'm not as uh, articulate as some beer bloggers are, obviously. I do limit my words but i do have like my weekly beer tasting i do so it's uh it's the same and i'm i'm looking at also possibly doing either level one cicerone or prudum which is the other version of cicerone so. we well i really i, I really like the cicerone but it, it the title said says it well it's a beer server so it it show it shows you like how to change a keg uh, different parts of it keg uh, like a uh, not keg but like the, the all the system the mm -hmm. the tap system the, the draw system uh, repeat that please the draw systems or the the drought the draft system yeah there you go that's it and um, and also like how to clean a glass uh, so it's okay but yeah it's really more for like more a, a restaurant like uh but, yeah, but it's good to have because, like you said, it's it's shutting down the trolls. So yes, it it helps. Yeah, yeah, it helps. Yeah. It helps because I really have a stronger base, like a stronger yeah base. We can say base, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. base beginning level. So yeah, That's yeah, it. no, for sure. And uh, unfortunately, the the internet has created a troll, uh, tr many many of trolls uh, who just I I don't you know I don't what? get it, but. It, it's okay in a way because you know it's all algorithms so if you have a lot of trolling on a picture instagram just computed as a content and since there's a lot of words when people troll you they say oh okay this is a conversation so instagram say oh cool 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 and it, it puts it even more out there so at first i was like oh, for three days and three nights but now i'm just like Bring it on, bring it on. I don't care. It just that. Yeah. That's it. They're they're harmless words on the internet. That's uh, that's the way I look at them. So <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, so your inspiration and your style behind your photography with you and, and Carl, uh, where do where do you kind of get that look from? 
uh, well, we really like um, like Ellen Von Onworth, uh, uh work. She's a photographer. She uh, take pictures of like movie stars and stuff. And but she always make like uh, a world around her pictures. And that's what we're trying to do. Like I said, I'm coming from a acting, commercial, publicity background, and Carl is. Uh, more in the industrial, commercial, fashion photography. So, and he loved to, you know, uh, to do the stylism. And I love vintage. So we mix, you know, all of our passions together to make a, a product that we are proud of. And uh, beer is just a pretext. <laughs> do it. <laughs> do you have a lot of breweries that reach out to you to uh, basically have them present your product through you? Yes, uh, since the co the coronavirus uh, virus, it's uh, wow, it's crazy. But I'm so happy because you know <laughs> I was uh, performing at La Voute in Old Montreal, and it, it was shut down. It still is shut down. Mm -hmm. I was uh, acting, you know, a lot of commercials, uh, fiction, movies, stuff like that. It all shut it down. It's it, it, it since a month ish. It started again, but it's very slow and super, you know slow let's say so i'm very glad i have la petite bière you know like thank you so much i'm so glad like i'm super busy and thank you everyone <laughs> perfect yeah because early on when the film industry from america started coming in I, i've done a couple of extra work but i was never past extra because i'm yeah. just your, your typical but it's looking still a, it's, it's super cool to do extra on american movies oh yeah, yeah it was fantastic uh and yeah. i'm i'm waiting for because having the american production in montreal and the surrounding area is great for quebec and canada to bring in all this extra money that we, we totally need so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, i was listening to valerie plant uh, um conference yesterday mm -hmm. She, she said that it's four billions per summer than the that the American tourists are bringing to the island every summer. Like everything uh, together, like tourism, movies, and stuff. Yeah. But still, four billions. It's crazy. Yeah, twenty 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 is not going to be great for a lot of cities. Uh, we're suffering. Uh, Oktoberfest in Germany's canceled. That's a billion dollars for a week, uh, like a month. So everybody's unfortunately going to be financial. A lot of people are going to be financially hurting this year. Uh, I'm lucky enough to still be working from home, so I can't really complain. And keeping the show alive, being able to, thankfully, because of Zoom and other technology, getting to interview people like yourself, who mm -hmm. I planned on eventually interviewing, but after I got through breweries <laughs> for a year, that didn't happen, obviously. But no. it is awesome to talk to fellow beer bloggers, Instagrammers, people in the beer community, and uh, just people's availability just to be online is amazing. So it's, it's great. It's true. it's true. Yes, totally. I'm very, uh, thanks to the internet actually, because <laughs> oof, it helped me a lot actually to reach out, you know, at first, like at when the first like two, three weeks where, where, mm -hmm. when every, everything was shut down, like for like really, really shut down. I did like one live every day, you know, try to reach out to people, you know, try to do, Cause it was hard, you know, and we were like kept in the dark a little bit at first. Like now we know more about mm -hmm. the virus and everything. And, but yeah, it was, uh, was uh, very hard. And you had like projects. I wanted to travel, you know, because this is one of the, 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 it's, it's one of the thing, one of the aspects that I want to push on a bit more, you know, and I was like, oh no, my whole year's canceled now. <laughs> so, but it's okay, you know, I develop other things <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it turns out super great and I'm super happy that I stayed here and we're so lucky, Carl and I, like, thank you everyone. Thank you, life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also had a lot of plans. There was going to be a lot of Vermont, New York, Maine. Uh, mass uh, for just for interviews. and then all of a sudden that came to a screeching um the weekend before the border shut i was supposed to go to plattsburgh to interview the two whole breweries they have and shut oh. down right away so it it happens unfortunately um humanity's gone through a pandemic before we're going to go through it again now we have thankfully technology where most of us can work from home so, so. <laughs> uh, that's great uh do you brew yourself do you brew your own beer no, no, no. It wasn't the plans, but it 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 
went away with the COVID. <laughs> it would have been a good time if you'd started just before, because you could sit on a logger and let it ferment and take your time with it. So, it's a... yeah. Uh, what are some of the breweries that you've collabed with recently that, that you kind of uh, have reached out to or have reached out to you to do um, content well, for them? Uh, oh, content for them. Yeah. Um, uh, well, through the job, like I said, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bokel reached out to me because I really like to talk about non-alcoholic products too. Uh, I am also working with Sober Carpenter. <laughs> yes, they, it, yeah. their, their beer are amazing and they make, it's uh, still without this uh, sin alcohol. Um, yeah, I... Uh, no alcohol. <laughs> so my, my real last name is Carpenter and I found that very funny <laughs> because I'm not sober in any way whatsoever. <laughs> 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 uh who's oh, this well, fml fest what what sorry the fml festival this is so amazing i'm so glad i'm part of this so you know up culture uh it's a very like big uh, magazine in the u.s and their their talk their, their focus is on craft beer and all their actors and mm -hmm. they also do a lot of uh, US festival well, US festival festivals and um, so this year obviously they couldn't do any so they do the they did the FML festival which you know why is yeah, yeah. FML. I, I, <laughs> I won't say what it is yeah I'll let you guess <laughs> bad word my life <laughs> Four weeks is up. there you go that's it <laughs> so so yeah so uh, they 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 reach out to me, you know, to talk about social media because this is uh, you were talking about the the people I was working with. I I, I worked for uh, the New Brunswick uh, government mm -hmm. before the pandemic, so I was there to to do a workshop on social media to all like uh, distillery uh, cider cider uh, cidery 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 yeah. uh, breweries. So all actors from the, the beers, beer craft, like craft cider and all of the scene. So I, I did a little uh, workshop for them and now I'm doing it for FNL. So it's going to be for everyone who bought a ticket and uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a panel, you know, Q and a kind of things and just, you know, talk about how I do it. My, I don't like the word tricks, but my tricks, <laughs> You know, because it's a super, it's super easy to work with Instagram. You just need to know what to do because most people think, oh, I need to post every day. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> it's like 10% of what you have to do. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, but I enjoy doing that. Like for me, it's kind of, you know, like a maze and I like to go through that maze because it changes every day and <gasps> so fun. I really like to do that. So I'm going to be doing that for FNL uh, on August 15th. Awesome. Uh, so I know what your favorite, you say New England IPA monster or hashtag uh, and uh, any IPA monster. What are some of your favorite New England beers right now? Uh, New England IPAs right now? Uh, well, La Norresa Marcel. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. I really also like uh, the, the Castel New England uh, IPAs. Like they've, they are, they've been so quiet for like two years and a half, you know, when the hype was super and they, they did good by waiting because all of them are like over the top. <laughs> I really enjoy them. Of course, all uh, Oval New England IPAs are good. Um, what else? What else? Oh, Brewski. Oh, like everything from Brewski. Uh, it, not just New England, but especially the smoothies. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. The, and Messerem, of course. But, you know. It's, they are the king of haze, so I'm not, a, it's not very surprising that I say that. <laughs> yeah, um, where, so I gotta ask, because I can never find it, where do you get your Oval bottles? Um, it, I'm very lucky, because uh. uh, Carl's parents are very <laughs> close to the brewery, so I, I have a <laughs> plug. Uh, lucky you. <laughs> I can. Why I know. I can never find it. Every time I hear it somewhere, it's sold out by the time I get there. I know. So I know. It's yeah. It, it's a little frustrating it's for I one know. of the biggest Quebec breweries, and I haven't gotten a chance to to try any of their beers. So you need to travel up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, so that's like a potential beercation for me now. Speaking of beercations, when it's safe to travel again, 
where are some beer vacations you plan on going on? Well, uh, I would I would really like to explore the West Coast, but not only um, the American West Coast, but the Canadian West Coast. I would like to travel within Canada a little bit more. And depending on the situation, because I've been to Hong Kong last year and I was there like for seven days so it was super quick and I was working for La Voute over there so I didn't have it wasn't a vacation you know but I was still able you know to reach out to a few breweries and they were able to send me beer to my hotel room but I would like to come back and just explore this beer scenery because wow they are good I, I was impressed like they were super not well rated on on tap and you know, beer advocate and all that stuff. But since that day, I don't trust this website anymore because you can have like a bad batch. That's why everybody voted for it to be like, you know, you can have mm -hmm. somebody who hate New England IPA and just do like bad reviews on New England IPA. So right now I don't trust as much those sites as I used to do since that day. But yeah, I would definitely go, go back to Hong Kong. I would love in Australia as well. A lot of uh, projects. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I know when it comes to Untapped, I can't remember. There was another podcast I was listening to. It was a brewery out right of North Carolina, and they found out that they had a bad batch because of Untapped. Because they're like, no, there's no way our beer should be this low. They recall it. They find out it was bad. So then they redid it, and then their ratings went, whoop. So. Oh, gee, oh, gee, at least people didn't, you know pay too much attention to their reviews that's yeah, great no, um i'm this it's the same way when it comes to movies i know people will complain oh this movie has this and this wrong and i'm like you know what i'll go see it because i have a different opinion just like i have a different palette than everybody else i like ipas some friends don't don't some it's friends, the funniest comment yeah. when somebody say you talk about for example in uh, new england and people's a person writes as a comment oh i don't like new england what do you want me to answer to this? <laughs> yeah. No, when I when I interviewed Troy, he said somebody rated uh, one of his uh, white uh, wheat beers. He's like, oh, I don't like wheat beers. This is why I'm rating it low. I'm like, then why are you trying it? <laughs> like, I'm not a huge fan of West Coast uh, IPAs, but I, tr I like to keep trying them because I found some really good ones that are very dry in the finish, you know. And I like to try, but of course, if you give me the choice between a New England and a West Coast, I'll go West Coast. But yeah, like don't talk bad when you don't uh, I, like there's enough trouble on the Internet. I mean, why do you keep spreading negativity? You just focus on the positivity. I mean, there's enough troubles and problems and if you want to be negative be negative on important matters like black lives or yes you know what i mean lgbtq I, uh, diversity creating diversity in in all on. industries yes it's just beer yeah no for sure um you know uh, i'm I'll, I'll give everything a tr once a try one time no matter what so we'll see. We'll see. it's um I, I always like I have my favorites whenever I go to brewery I always start if they have with a lager because I know if the lager's good the rest of the beers are going to be good <laughs> yeah that's great, great because great. <laughs> a lager is a royal pain in the butt to brew so oh yes people think it's easy but it's so delicate and you know if you make one mistake you cannot add more hops to you know mm -hmm. erase it no 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 <laughs> exactly. so, yeah yeah it's yeah it's um yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so what's next for La Petite Bière brand? Well, um, I obviously want to be there for Quebec, like the Quebec province. And, but, but I want to stay, you know, uh, loyal to my, my niche, let's say. So I'm trying to, you know, uh, drink local as much as possible, try new things. Like um, I tried like the Bleu Royal uh, pre-mixed can amazing like i'm discovering so many new great products and also restaurants because especially in montreal there's so many of them and i want to help them you know and it's by pairing food with beer it's such a great way to democratize beer even more you know because i'm gonna put some i don't know hashtag montreal foodie for example and a, a, a person who's, in, who's into food is gonna maybe try one beer because i'm gonna talk about the meal i'm having with the beer 
So I'm trying to put that more and more uh, on the first plan. So, um, so yeah, I reach larger and I democratize, democratize beer and I help local as much as I can, you know? Yeah, no, and that's great to hear because we should be supporting local, especially right now with COVID. Uh, stick with local. Uh, and yes, because yes, it's much as much as we can. Yeah, and because Montreal we're such a great food culture, there's a reason I'm 25 pounds overweight. So <laughs> <laughs> I get you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh, so I got no other questions for you at this time. Is there anything you'd like to talk about or present forward? Oh. Maybe to add, like in my in my next projects, what I really wanted, I really want to do is to, you know, I, I told you before the pandemic, I wanted to travel, you know, far, but I still want to travel. But Quebec is like Quebec province is amazing, you know. So I want to put that too. I want to try to do like, uh, for example, for uh, two weeks, I'm I'm leaving in Gaspésie and I'm doing La Route des Bières de l'Est, by Gaspésie. It's like it start, mm -hmm. starting after Quebec, yeah. to the Gaspésie. So, yeah, I would like to do stuff like that, you know, to still be able to produce like a portfolio of it. So when the pandemic is going to be over, I can uh, uh, come and reach out. I can reach out to um, international companies or other countries where I think the, the beer scene is uh, interesting. And yeah. Awesome. Uh, so let everybody know how they can find you on social media, your website, the GoFundMe, which I'll, I'll add in the link anyways. But if you know a link, just let everybody know how they can uh, reach you, add you online, yeah, sure. all your social media. So yeah, it's a uh, LA underscore petite underscore BR everywhere. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. it. Oh, and I have a website, but it's not on yet. It's, it's TBD. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, we'll add it in future show notes uh, for those who haven't seen it in the future. We'll see it eventually when we see the website. I'll add it there. Um, as as I said, I'm going to add the GoFundMe as well because yeah, I sure. like I like thing I like supporting things that that need support like that, oui, right? so. especially right now. Uh, oui. And yeah, uh, as for our show, AllBeerInside.com is the website. It will be getting a major overhaul very shortly, so you might see something new by the time this episode is out. Okay. Uh, as for us, on all social media, minus TikTok, we're not there yet, at AllBeerInside everywhere. Uh, and as I say at the every, end of every episode, drink craft, not crap. <laughs> awesome. Thank Cheers. you very much for today. Thank you for having me.